All right, so I've been tutoring a few students over the course of the past few weeks, and there's a few things that a lot of students tend to ask about in regards to science, and that is timing. Uh, and I want to point out and devote an entire video to this because there are a few dimensions to it, a few layers to it, that um, uh, I want to discuss in, in terms of what methods you can use for timing, three of them, and a couple tips that I thought, and, and things that I thought every student already does for science that I did and I, that I recommend to students, but that I find students aren't really doing that much of. And I want to kind of clarify this and make it a point that you need to be doing these things in order to improve your science score. So, first and foremost, let's talk about the different methods. There are a few different methods you can go by timing for science, and depending on what score you want, what score you have, and how much you've studied already, choosing the approach is going to be a, diff a bit different for every student. So let's get into the approaches. The first one is to take the 35 minutes on the science exam and divide it into six parts. One part for each of the six passages. This is very simple, you just you get about 5 minutes and 50 seconds per passage. Nothing too crazy, nothing, nothing out of this world. That's the approach that I used when I practiced for the ACT and took the exam. There were six. The, the, the weird thing about it is that a lot of the official practice tests that circulate around the internet, they have seven passages, so you can't actually use this strategy because you'll go over. Um, and I used those practice tests and I, I practiced with it, and then I ended up taking the actual exam and I realized, oh, there's only six passages. So I ended up in this weird scenario, but um, either way, just you gotta just stick to breaking it up evenly if you're using this approach, regardless of how many passages are on your exam. That's the first simple method. Now the other methods are kind of weird and they get more complex and more, uh, like, I, like I said, they're just a bit weirder depending on your situation, you can use either one of them. So basically the second method is rooted in spending more time on certain passage types. What are the science passage types? Let me describe them for you. There's three of them. Data representation, research summaries, conflicting viewpoints. What are they? Data representation is, is there's usually going to be two of them. This is where they basically just give you some graphs and some scientific data. It's about, it's just observational data. They, they just like say, hey, here's some graphs. And then that's it. It's what you think of when you think of the science section. And like I said, there's usually going to be two of them. The second one is research summaries. There's usually three of these. Um, and these are much longer. These usually have multiple experiments or they might have just one. But the key giveaway that it's a research summary is that it says, there, it literally says the word experiment or study. Like it'll list out studies or, or it'll just have one. But it'll say experiment and then it'll and have the entire description or whatever. Like I said, there's three of those. And then the last passage type is conflicting viewpoints. This is the easy one to notice. It's about like different scientists and students. Okay, so now that we got that out of the way, um, I need to make clear that the research summaries and con conflicting viewpoints are usually the hardest, without a doubt. Confl uh, conflicting viewpoints t takes like the most time to answer. There's usually seven questions, which is the high, uh, high end of how many questions you get per passage. And then on top of that, you're usually going to get at least one really hard research summaries, maybe two. Um, and when I say really hard for research summaries, that means the passage is going to be like a whole page long. Um, and it might even have a lot of words like describing the experiment like step by step. If you've taken a lot of science practice tests, that might ring some bells. So for those ones, you're probably going to need to take more time. So a timing method that I recommend you use if you are struggling with, uh, if you've tried the first method and you want to score high and you're kind of struggling, what you can do is spend five minutes per passage on the two data representation ones. So it's 10 minutes devoted to data representation. And then for the three research summaries, you spend six minutes and 15 seconds. And then for the conflicting viewpoints, again, six minutes, 15 seconds. So for the ones that are taking a lot more time, you're allotting an, uh, 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 an appropriate amount of time. Because if you use the first method, for example, the way you just break it up evenly, you are inevitably going to end up spending more time for the harder passages, without a doubt. It's just gonna take you more time. There's gonna be more questions, there's gonna be more to skim through. It's just gonna take you longer. So doing this method, if, you're, if you've tried the first one and you're stuck, will give you a structured way to go about finding, uh, an, a structured way about using the alternative and it's just going to potentially make things easier for you in terms of keeping track of time. What I will say is, um, like I said, out of the research summaries, there's three, there's only like one or two that are gonna be super hard. So for the easier one, you don't have to take up all six minutes, 15 seconds, which means you can take a bit longer than six minutes, 15 seconds on those really hard, on those really hard passages. So that's another thing you can uh, consider. Another thing, this is kind of a bonus tip that I just thought of that I wanted to add. Um, another thing that students kind of ask me about is, hey, what order should I read the passages in? Should I read like the conflicting viewpoints first and the research summaries last or the data? Should I do the easier stuff first or the harder stuff later? Um, what I will say for that is you don't necessarily need to read things in a certain order. What you need to do is a lot an appropriate amount of time for each passage type, depending on how difficult it is. Like I said, the conflicting viewpoints and research summaries can get pretty difficult. So if you uh, open up an exam and you see that the conflicting viewpoints is all the way at the end, then you gotta save six, seven minutes for that one at the end because it's gonna take you six, seven minutes. 
you can't just go through the exam and kind of wing it and then get to the last one and be like, oh, I have three minutes, four minutes left. And you know, that's gonna be a bad situation. You're not gonna, you're gonna end up losing a lot of questions there. So what you have to do is a lot in a, uh, an appropriate amount of time. What I would encourage you to do is right, after, right as you open an exam, right as you get started, quickly scroll through or look through to see which passage is the hardest and which one do I need to spend the most time on. Because, or which passages I should say because you have to allot time depending on what you're doing. And then you can go about your approach the right way. Now, this is going to take some getting used to if you're changing approaches, so I encourage you to practice a bit. And then the last approach. This is if you're someone that does not want to score in the high 30s. Maybe you're okay with getting a high 20 score or a low 20 score or even below. That's fine. Um, whatever is good to you, that's what matters. But if for, for this method, um, basically what you're doing is if you are really slow at reading, like really, really slow, and that's totally fine, it basically we can spend more time on the first five passages and less time on the last one. Last, the last one being probably the hardest. You wouldn't want to spend too much time on it. And that allows you to go really hard, go in on onto those passages that are a bit easier, get more, get a higher question, you know, um, get more questions right, and and answer that at, at, at a better rate. Um, but you're gonna end up losing time there because you're gonna end up probably taking longer to answer questions. You're gonna take longer to read the passage. So it's something you can try if you are okay with getting a 26, 28, maybe. Um, if you use this approach, then statistically you can get like a 26, 27, 28 if you answer it pretty well and pretty accurately on the first passages. Um, but keep in mind you're gonna be making a sacrifice, and it's. I have never seen someone score, it's very rare for someone to score high 30s using an approach that's not one of the, one of the first two. And usually when I say one of the first two, it's not just about how you time yourself, but also using an approach where you're reading the passage first and then you go to the questions. I do not see that much success from students. I could be totally wrong, but in terms of just what I've seen in terms of trends, I see most students who read the passage first in one to two minutes. If I said two to three minutes before, I was wrong. But one to two minutes and then um, go to the questions, spend 30 to 40 seconds per question. People that do that tend to score the highest, and if you, guys, if you just practice that again and again, you'll find the most success. So that's what I encourage to do. And now my one tip that students tend to keep on forgetting, uh, and that I want to solidify and make clear, is that you need to first and foremost structure your timing. You can't just wing the exam. You got to know after a certain amount of time, I have to have a certain number of questions done. That's why I'm giving you X amount of time per passage so that you know what you need to be doing. You have to have a goal in terms of what you're doing, not just on the entire exam. It's not just 35 minutes. It's five minutes at a time. It's five minutes, 50 seconds at a time. It's six minutes, 15 seconds at a time, whatever you're doing. So you have to set that goal and go about it that way to make sure that you're putting the right amount of time into the right things. Otherwise, you're going to end up with a scenario where you don't have enough time at the end of the exam to answer the harder passages. And that's going to stink. You're going to lose points. You're going to lose questions that you could have got right. You're going to miss out on questions that were easy that you could have got right like this, but you didn't even see them because you didn't spend enough time on them and you spent too much time on question XYZ that was like that took you two minutes to just look at the passage. We've all been in that, you know, that situation. I've made that mistake too many times. So I'm here to tell you not to make that mistake. And this is one way to go about it. Keep an eye on the clock. You need to know what you're doing when you're doing it. Because if you don't, then you're kind of winging it and you're, you're not really guaranteeing. An, it's, it's a very unstructured way to go about it. Um, you want to practice in a way that's setting you up to guarantee success. And to guarantee success, you have to quantify what you're doing and when you're doing it. Keep an eye on the clock. Know that after 17 minutes, you have to have a certain number of questions done, or approximately. Know that you know you have set, set checkpoints. This is the way I would do it. Five minutes. Of, if you're doing the five minutes fifty seconds approach for each passage, then you know you have a five minutes fifty seconds checkpoint where you get done with the first passage. Then five minutes fifty seconds, and then it should be eleven and a half or eleven minutes and uh, like f yeah, eleven and a half minutes for the next one approximately, and then like uh, whatever fi another five minutes fifty seconds. You can do the math. Like keep adding on top, so you know what your checkpoints are. And when you time yourself, have your timer there, your phone or whatever, or your clock, your watch, whatever it is, and um, make sure that you keep track of those checkpoints and see, okay, as I practice, what checkpoints am I reaching? Am I doing well on timing? Do I need to change something up? Do I need to just keep practicing more? Probably you want to keep practicing more because it takes practice to do this. But yeah, check. make sure you're using checkpoints. Don't just wing it because it's going to be very hard for you to see that improvement if you're just winging it every single time. Doing it in a structured way will allow you to um, really see what you're spending time on. And if you're going over on certain things, you'll know exactly where it is. And you can diagnose that weakness. So that's what I'll say for that. Um, if you need practice exams, we have six in the link in the description. That's about it for me. Good luck on the ACT exam. We also have free tutoring linked below, so if you want some cramming tutoring before the ACT, or you just need help in general, we will be there to answer your questions. That's it for me. Good luck practicing on the ACT science, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.